What's happening everybody, Jamie Lord here and welcome to another illustration video. In today's episode, we're gonna be going through how to create an awesome 80s neon glow effect using Adobe Photoshop. Let's get into it. All right, so today guys, as I said, I really wanted to show you guys how to create uh, this neon glow effect using Adobe Photoshop. Um, I wanted to do this tutorial mostly because I use this effect quite a lot. It's actually a pretty simple effect to apply. Um, I use it because it really kind of fits that cyberpunk 80s vibe that I like to go for in my work. Uh, and it allows me to create some really sharp highlights. So let's have a look at how all that kind of comes together. So I'm going to switch to just a, a basic blank canvas here. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is get rid of this white. So neons, you really need a dark color to make them pop. Um, you don't really see neons kind of coming on too much during the day. They really need that nighttime. So we're going to go with a nice black color here to, to work with. And if you can, try and just bring it into a little bit of color so that it's not completely black. Um, just something like this kind of purple here um, will do, or even like a dark blue. Let's go with that. And I'm going to fill the background with that. Um, it just means that we're going to get a little bit more of a realistic feel. Um, whether it's nighttime or a shadow, that is never really going to be completely black. You're always going to have a little bit of color going into it. Uh, so it's important to kind of keep that going there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually bring the shape that we're going to use to create that neon sign. So I'm using this like cool, you know, cyberpunk 80s, whatever triangle. Um, but that triangle is kind of gray at the moment, so not really popping. So I want to change the, the color of that. So I'm going to lock the transparency, which is this little checkerboard here. And I'm going to pick a color. Let's go with a nice kind of pink, um, contrast with the blue in the background. And then option delete is going to fill that color. I'm going to take it off of the lock transparency, important, otherwise the effect isn't going to apply. And I'm going to double click on the layer tab. And it's going to bring open this um, layer style panel. There's a bunch of effects in here that we can look at. Uh, we won't look at them all today, obviously. We're only going to look at a couple. Uh, but the main one we're looking for is this one, is this outer glow. Uh, and that's already kind of set to my pink here, so it matches up. Um, I use these colors quite a bit, which is probably why it's been set to that. But you can if you want to change the color. Um, but obviously, we want to leave it the, the color that the shape is already at. It doesn't have to be exact match to that color. It just needs to be in the vicinity, just so it looks nice and realistic. Um, now, the next thing we want to look at here is the blend mode. So by default, it's set to normal, but most people like to use uh, linear dodge add, and that's going to add color, uh, sorry, add lighting to it rather than color to it. Uh, you probably notice that it didn't make a huge difference to my artwork here, but where this is going to come into effect is if you have different colors on, you know, that are, are sitting behind your actual neon sign here and again you probably shouldn't do this because it's um, you know a, a lighter color and that's not really going to give that pop effect but if you guys can see here this neon glow on the yellow looks a little bit darker it actually looks like a shadow and it doesn't look like light and so what we want to do is double click back onto here and go to our blend mode and go to linear dodge add so instead of adding color it's actually adding light. So you probably don't really see it too much here because again, it's on a lighter background. And so that neon kind of doesn't really pop, but you can just kind of catch there's a little bit of a lighter highlight around it. And that's a little bit more realistic. So blend mode, you want to try and keep that on linear um, dodge add. Then we've got opacity, noise, spread size, a whole bunch of different sliders here. Um, opacity is obviously going to dictate how opaque that light is. I usually kind of like to sit mine at about sort of 50 to 60. Um, we'll leave it at for like 55. That's a nice kind of in between. Um, noise, we don't really play with noise. That's just going to give it this kind of weird, like dissolved effect. That's not really going to be the, the way to go here. Uh, technique, always leave it on softer. Spread is going to give you guys a little bit more brightness. So if you boost that all the way, it's going to make it a really solid, thick outline, which is not the desired effect. So I usually kind of treat, keep that down to like four or five percent, very, very low number, simply because it's going to give me a bit of a, a softer edge. So I'll just actually put it down to one. Size is pretty obvious. It's going to dictate the actual size of that glow all the way 
up to 250 pixels. So remember that if you are working on a super large um, file that's got you know heaps of pixels that are super high res, the max you're ever gonna be able to go to is 250 pixels. Um, so if this was huge, if this was like an A0 file, that glow would actually seem a lot smaller in proportions. It's one of the things that um, Photoshop still hasn't really kind of looked at. Uh, but in this instance, we are just gonna kind of leave it at 160. That's not too bad. And then the range, again, kind of similar to spread, maybe a little bit less on the hard side. We're gonna boost the range up. The more you go, the less range it has. And so we're gonna leave that to like, let's say, yeah, 50, 60%. Again, you play with these sliders and you kind of, it does a, a bit of a live thing. As long as you've got tick on the preview here, you'll see exactly what happens in there. Um, so that's not bad at this stage, but I really wanna get a nice glow going inside of that as well. So again, I'm gonna double click on the layer tab and I'm gonna go to inner glow. And that's gonna give me a little bit more of a, like an electric light effect. It's set to white. Again, as always, you can double click on that and change the color to something else. That's a little bit trippy and not super kind of clean on the effect that I'm going for. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at white. And then same thing, you could do a linear dodge add um, if you wanted to. This one's probably less important because it's always gonna be a constant color there, but just for um, clarity's sake, I'm gonna leave it on linear dodge add. I'm gonna drop the opacity down to like 94. Um, mostly what you want here is something that's pretty close to white. So, it, you know, you want that opacity to be pretty high here. Otherwise, you're not really gonna get that glowing effect. It's gonna look a little bit dull. You want that to be bright, uh, but not so bright that the entire thing is white. And that's where this one comes in. So we can zoom in here and you can kind of see that effect. Um, if I play with the size, Again, it's one of those strange things because I'm going from the the center here, it's going to reduce the size down from the center. Um, and if I leave that size at zero pixels, it's going to fill the entire thing with white, which is not really what I want. I want that pink to come through. So if I increase that up, it's going to start to go real quick uh, because again, my thing isn't super wide here. But if I just drop that down again, you can kind of play with these sliders until you're you're happy. Um, I think probably about 24, 25 is gonna, is gonna work pretty well. And then choke here is gonna mean, you know, it's gonna choke it down to the middle a little bit. It's gonna give me more pink on the sides, but I probably don't want that too much. Again, because that neon needs to be really bright and then just have a hint of pink sort of fading towards the edges where the tube is a bit rounder and there's more kind of color going on there. Um, and the pink is also really coming in on that glow there. Um, and then we're gonna leave range probably where it's at again, um, simply because range and choke and size all kind of do similar-ish things. But again, just play with those sliders and, and see where you like to sit. Uh, and then that's pretty good. That's a nice kind of clean neon effect. Uh, I might just make the outer glow come back in here and make the range just a little bit less, just to increase that, that kind of opacity of that glow maybe drop, boost the opacity up a little bit as well. Um, and again, just keep playing with those until you get a nice kind of clean effect that is what you're looking for. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So the sign is, is all good. The nice thing about this is now that is that has applied to my layer, I can actually draw with this kind of neon light here uh, and pick that color and you get this kind of cool um, effect that you guys can do here where that effect is applying as I'm drawing, which is um, super rad. But for now, what I wanna do is kind of complete this. So first things first is I'm gonna put a new layer behind this. And with my nice kind of vivid pink here, I'm gonna go to my gradient tool and pick a radial gradient. So this one here, second. And I'm just gonna go roughly in the middle and make this gradient. So that's obviously the, gonna be the shine of the gradient on the back wall that this neon is sitting on. Uh, but that's super bright, that's way too bright. We're losing the darkness of the background here and so that neon's not really popping anymore. And so I just wanna drop that opacity down a little bit to like roughly about here. Um, and I could actually probably bring that up a little bit more into the center. But as you guys can see, I've kind of screwed the bottom up a little bit 
uh, down here. So I'm going to delete that and start again and go with my gradient just a little bit higher up in that triangle to get that effect. Um, and there we go. That's nice and looking a little bit kind of cleaner there. Um, so we're pretty close to being done. Last thing I want to do is get that neon kind of um, sign shadow on the wall behind it to complete the look. So again, I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to add a drop shadow to that kind of neon sign. Uh, and that's going to give me the, the, the shadow of itself onto the wall behind it. And again, shadow here, we're going to leave it on multiply um, because that's, that's going to make that kind of color work a little bit better for us. Um, distance obviously is going to be the distance from that, um, that glow. So how far out it's sticking out and how far the shadow is going. Um, size of that is going to control how blurry or how sharp that is. I want it to be a little bit kind of blurry, but not too much. Um, I can probably drop the opacity down as well. And again, just play with these sliders until you get somewhere that you're, you know, satisfied with at this stage. Um, and there we go. That's it. That's the, the basic simple steps on how to create a nice kind of clean neon glow on all of these. So again, um, hope you guys enjoyed this um, and thanks for watching. That's it for this week's episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. And as always, we will see you guys next week for another illustration video. Thanks for watching.